Hey, so in this video I want to talk about the topic of uh, concurrent and parallel processing. So concurrent and parallel processing uh, you'll probably learn about in any uh, operating systems class that you take and uh, you know, maybe, maybe some other classes as well, but it's uh, generally covered in uh, operating system courses in um, you know, computer science curriculums. So uh, in my class, my professor he spoke, uh, he spoke about this topic at length due to the fact that it was uh, frequently misunderstood by a lot of students in the class. Uh, the reason being that it's, they're so f uh, similar topics to each other. Uh, they're almost the same thing, but they aren't, so people would uh, frequently misunderstand them to be the same thing. Uh, you know, the, what, what they really are, it's in the name. Uh, you know, parallel, you can think of like a series of parallel circuits. It's like you know, things happening at the same time, and when you say like two people are doing things in parallel, um, things things that are happening in the same time. So that's generally what we're talking about here: uh, processing happening at the same time. So uh, how is that different from concurrent? So concurrent, uh, things are happening at almost the same time. So we can think about two processes. So we can think about process A, and we can think about process B. So we have uh, two sets of it. Over here, we've got our uh, concurrent processes and our parallel processes A and B. So, in concurrency, uh, there there may be very small time slices on your processor where uh, processes get to execute. So, it may look like things are happening at the same time, but really they aren't. There's just such minuscule amounts of time in between these processes and ex executing. So, you might have some processes doing addition or something. And in concurrent programming. Uh, a might go for a little bit and then it's, B still hasn't gone because it hasn't gotten a chance on the processor to execute yet then B will go then A will go and then B will go and you know so on and so forth you know by now A and B might both have finished they may have uh, you know gotten all of their cycles that they needed on the processor and then they're done but the the big thing here to understand is that they're happening separately I wish I had two pens to draw for process or for parallel processing, um, because I would just take two pens and, and you know, go straight down on A and B at the same exact time. But just since I don't have two, really, it's just that they're both processing on the same at the same time. Uh, a reason that might come about is that A and B might not be dependent on each other, so you may be able to process them at the same time. Here, maybe you know B depends a little bit on A, so it needs to go separately. Or there's another possibility that uh, you've got a processor with only you know uh, one core available, so it can only do one process at the same time. And then here, you know, you've got a multi-core processor, and uh, when, so when I say here, I mean parallel. Say you might have a multi-core processor that uh, has enough clock cycles where you can run these processes at the same time. Uh, it could also come about in the way that you're programming your application. You may want to. Uh, program it in a way that it, your processes will only uh, process concurrently and uh, you may want them to be parallel. So those are a few different ways that you can achieve that. So that's really the difference between concurrent and parallel processing. They're, they're very similar. Uh, there's just a slight difference. Uh, when I you know interview people, people frequently get this wrong. So uh, it's a good topic to have a good understanding of. So I uh, yeah, hope that helped.